Holy moly, there are all sorts of crazy haunted houses out there. I don't know about you, but I'd prefer to remain largely in unhaunted properties. Thing is, as time goes on, more and more ghosts accumulate. I think we probably have the largest amount of ghosts in history in this current moment, as over the years, more and more ghosts have been made. Tragedies don't quit, anger doesn't fade, and spooky specters don't totally disappear until they feel the regrets have been quashed. So if we think about all the wild stuff happening, we can probably assume that we're always adding new ghosts to the mix. Which means there are more haunted houses to explore. However, a lot of the most famous ones have been around for a while, as it seems that older ghosts hold a little more sway than newer ones. So let's get right into it and take a look at the top 5 haunted homes you should never enter part 2. Coming in number 5, we've got the Los Feliz Murder Mansion. Also a great name for an instrumental math rock band or maybe a spooky improv group. Feel free to use it as long as you invite me to the first show. The Los Feliz Murder Mansion is exactly what it sounds like. A mansion in Los Feliz where somebody was murdered. It goes further than that, as the circumstances surrounding the murder are quite grisly indeed. In the late 50s, this house belonged to Dr. Harold Perelson, a family man with a successful career. Those last two bits were just for show though, as there was plenty of darkness hidden beneath the veneer of respectability. On one fateful night, he decided enough was enough and found his trusty hammer. Using this carpentry tool as an improvised weapon, he ended the life of his wife in brutal fashion. One attack wasn't enough either, as Dr. Perelson went after his daughter as well. Thankfully, he wasn't able to finish her off, but she was still gravely injured. Realizing what he had done, he decided to drink enough acid to burn through his insides and send him on to the afterlife, chilling to say the least. What would drive a person to commit such an act? After this all became public knowledge, people avoided the home for a while. The place where something so horrid happened can't be comfortable to sit around in. However, after a while, a family bought up the property and used it largely for storage. That's probably a safer bet than actually living there, eh? In 2016, the place was cleared out and most of the remaining stuff was auctioned off. Then it sold in 2019 and someone new moved in. Maybe time did a nice revision and people forgot what had happened there. Although it doesn't seem as though the ghosts are very violent or surly. No, the hauntings here largely consist of things being moved around without anyone present. And speaking of present, there have also been reports of unexplainable Christmas gifts appearing around the house. Maybe these ghosts feel bad for how things went down and have decided to live a lovely family life once more. Interesting. Coming in at number 4, we've got the Mar Residence. The older a building is, the more likely it is to be haunted, yeah? Can we accept that as a fact of life? Good, good. So it should stand to reason that the Mar Residence, located in Saskatoon, is probably bursting at the seams with phantoms. This house was actually built way before the city even incorporated, and is the longest standing building in the area. Of course it would accumulate some ghosts over the years. The main way folks might have ended up tethered to this home in the afterlife is through its use as a field hospital in 1885. Hospitals often find themselves creating many ghosts, as folks who suffer for extended periods of time or go before they're ready tend to stick around afterwards. The Mar residence also has a long history of different folks deciding to live there for a while, so any number of tenants may be haunting the halls. One ghost in particular causes a whole lot of issues. Appearing as an elderly, angry man, the phantom flies around, tormenting any woman who enter the house. Some things never change, eh? No matter what era you pull an angry dude from, he'll always find a way to harass some woman he doesn't know. Classic. So if you're really freaked out, don't worry. The Mar Residence actually offers a virtual tour on the website, meaning you can shuffle around this creaky home without having to put yourself in the way of any spectral presences. They've also made an attempt to connect with all the cool youths out there by starting up a TikTok account. I can't vouch for its efficacy, but at least they're trying. Ghost stories in real life just don't have the same pull as online ones anymore. Interestingly enough, it seems to be a popular destination for weddings too, so if you really want, you can book your next event at the Mar Residence. There might be more than one lady in white though, and nobody can really get mad at ghosts for upstaging a bride. Coming in at number 3, we've got the Morgan House. Another tale of familial terror, this house is situated in Kalimpong, India. A husband-wife duo moved in, sharing the last name Morgan. Of course, that's where this house got its famous name. At first, all seemed well with this young couple. They kept up appearances, went about their daily chores, and ensured that all looked well. However, they were hiding a dark secret. Mr. Morgan supposedly tortured his wife behind closed doors, beating her and performing terrible acts. She had no way to leave him, so all she could do was endure. As time went on, the torture got worse, and Miss Morgan was desperate for a way out. She stopped seeing friends, ceased leaving the house, and eventually became a 
total shut-in. And after all that, it was too much. She took her own life, leaving Mr. Morgan to abandon the property. For decades, the house was left in this state, empty, dusty, and home to a ghost. But eventually, the Indian government stepped in and revitalized the structure, making it into a boutique hotel. The ghost story doesn't end there, though. Guests at this hotel often hear the clicking of high heels and the sobbing of a woman in distress. Those who know the story of the Morgans understand that this is a sign that Miss Morgan is near, even all these years later. Coming in at number two, we've got Casa de la Poesia, or the House of Poetry. That doesn't sound too spooky, but poets tend to be pretty morbid, don't you think? Once belonging to Colombian poet Jose Asuncion Silva, this was a place of tragedy. Silva lived a life largely void of pleasure or triumph. Although he did publish some wildly influential and successful poetry, a lot of what happened in his life surrounding his writing was very sad. His only friend, his sister, died too young, leaving him all alone. His best manuscripts were lost in a shipwreck, and his family fell upon hard times, resulting in economic ruin. Needless to say, this lonely poet wasn't a very happy individual. Eventually, after putting out enough work to support himself for a few years, Silva took his own life at the age of 30. After this, people began to hear whispers and shuffling from within the house, likely thanks to the ghost of Silva, a moody poet even in the afterlife. These days, the house is a museum. Guests come here for the poetry and the poltergeistery. And finally, at number one, we've got the Villisca Axe Murder House. Now, most of the houses on this list are well known for having a spooky atmosphere and trying to make people afraid simply through backstories. However, visitors are often pleasantly surprised by how little harm they do. Ghosts have a tough time actually hurting folks after all. The Villisca Axe Murder House has spooky legends and horrifying repercussions in spades. Made famous for a gruesome string of murders back in the early 20th century, folks have always been a little afraid of this shack. No running water, no power, no hope. After the young family was famously murdered and no explanation was discovered, rumors of ghosts and ghouls proliferated. Even today, most paranormal enthusiasts don't seem to want to actually spend a night. In fact, one investigator did in 2014 and did his best to find out what he could. In the end, he only ended up with a self-inflicted stab wound. So be careful when dealing with this fascinating old home. Who knows what you might see, hear, or think. Who wants to put in an offer on one of these? With prices the way they are lately, it might be your last chance to be a homeowner before the fall of the empire. Roommates are almost a given these days. Why not opt for a phantom roommate? They'll leave less dishes in the sink. So what'd you think of the list? Do you agree with my picks? Which haunted house haunts you? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more sequential ones from the top five haunted homes you should never enter, part one. Marcus Aurelius says, I haven't missed Keegan. I haven't tried taking a shot at him yet. Oh. You know the old saying, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. Now who said that again? Courtney Nelson says, Def need a part two. Your wish is granted. Sassy Karen says, I never knew about Lallory until I saw her story in American Horror Story. A hey, fun fact, they shot most of that in New Orleans, but not really at Lallory Mansion. Layer Mistress says, have any paranormal investigators other than first family members been allowed to check out the White House, I wonder? It would be quite an experience for any team allowed in overnight. You know, that is a fascinating idea. Although, I bet they make people sign NDAs and whatnot just to keep things above board. That guy Aaron says, my grandpa's house is haunted. I played the board. And I'm pretty sure Zozo slammed my door open. Well. It was nice knowing ya. And that's the time we have for today. I'm going to assassinate the assassin of a guy trying to prevent the privatization of a public good right in front of the guy's daughter and the assassin's son. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.